Hi, I'm Mark from Trading the Market, and welcome to our long-awaited Greyhound video. At first I was going to make this into one big video, but as the runtime was well over an hour, I decided to make it into a series of videos. There is a lot of information to take down, and a bit of maths required. I felt it would be easier to watch back and learn the bits you wanted to learn if they were in smaller videos. In each video I'll explain the different method or methods of strategies or profiling for the dogs. I may even group some depending on the style of the strategy. In this video I will touch on two strategies that involve occurrence. I'm going to start off by covering a question that I often see in the comments on our Discord server. Why would I give away my edge? Simple, but first let's explain what an edge is. I would define an edge as having an advantage over other traders. This advantage can be in the form of better information, superior analysis or effective strategies. An edge is what helps a trader consistently outperform the market over time. So back to the question, why would I give it away? There's a few reasons. Since starting trading the market with James, we have shared our knowledge with so many people who want to be traders and people who are now trading full time and others that have left trading behind. I talk with traders every day and not only do they learn from me but I learn from them. Only a fool thinks he knows it all. Also, showing your edge isn't as big of a risk as you may think. It would be if all you needed was the idea, the selection criteria and the method, but it requires a good mentality and discipline. Sadly, most people who watch this video won't make a success of Greyhound trading, or even in sports trading, not because it's not the real edge, but because they need more than just an edge. Erling Haaland could teach you how to play football, but without the discipline and dedication it requires to play at his level, you'll never be at his level. Max Verstappen could teach you how to drive an F1 car, but without the practice and discipline, you're never going to be an F1 driver competitively. This is a simple concept that people overlook every day. Ah, and also don't forget that any edge makes a new edge. It's probably one to think about. Now to the main event. I'll be showing you today two strategies that I use to trade dogs. The first is the repeated trap method. This is so dangerous that you've never seen me talk about it in the Discord until now. It's like handling plutonium. The risk is so massive that I would say 99% of people will not try it or should not try it. But I like it and having a good mindset is like wearing a lead hazmat suit. So here is the repeated trap method. The idea behind it is the trap number that wins the first race will repeat itself in the next 11 races. So if dog 1 wins the first race then it's likely that we'll see another dog 1 win that day at that track. Simple. On the day of writing this, let me take you over the results of the PGR races for the 27th of September 2024, which was yesterday for me when writing this. Starting with Hove, the first race was won by Dog Free, and the second race was won by Dog Free. Done. Next track is Central Park. Dog 5 won this. I will skip this race as a rule, as there were only 10 races, not 12, as we can see that the second race was void, despite the fifth race was won by Dog 5. We move on to Crayford, first race was won by Dog 4, and the second race was won by Dog 4. Then Kingsley, Dog 6 won the first race, and then it won the 10th race. Now you see why this is not one for the faint hearted, it did win at 6-1. to one. Next we move on to Newcastle, Dog 3 won the first race, and Dog 3 won the second race. Sheffield, Dog 1 won the first race, and it won the 6th race. Nottingham, Dog 4 won the first race, and won the 4th race. Romford, Dog 4 won the first race, and Dog 4 won the 3rd race. Last track is Sunderland, Dog 3 won the first race and Dog 3 won the 8th race at 5 to 1. As some time has passed since writing this and the video being made, I will also do the 7th of October. At Romford, Dog 4 won the first race and the 8th race with a very nice 16 to 1. Swindon, Dog number 5 won the first and 12th race. Monmore, Dog 3 won the first and 7th. Sunderland, Dog 1 won the first and the 8th race at 7 to 1. Central Park, Dog 3 won the first and the 4th race. At Kingsley, Dog 6 won the first and the 10th race. And at Yarmouth, Dog 6 won the first and the 7th race. And the last PRG race was Nottingham, where the Dog 5 won the first and 9th race at 8 to 1. Now of course there are going to be times when this doesn't happen and the strategy is based on the maths of repeating numbers from small form data sets. What really makes this strategy a risk to people is the staking plan. You place your initial bet and then for each race it loses you need to double down. Now before everybody loses their heads, I don't mind the risks for this method myself. It may be too rich for many of you. If you did it across 12 races and started with £1, your final bet would be £1,024 waiting for the comment section now to explode. If this is too rich for your blood, and I suspect it might be, as you need an established bank to weather the losses, 
then play the short end of the method. If most you want to risk is £15 for any one track in any one day, then start the process from race 9, as long as the same number dog hasn't won in race 2 to 8, you can do this. In the Nottingham example, the dog won in race 9. You would have placed your pound on the race 9 and won your bet and took the £8 profit. At Kingsley, you would have staked your £1 in the race 9 and then lost, and then staked £2 on race 10 and won with a profit of £12 minus your £1 from race 9. I do have to say, the odds need to be over 2.0 to make profit from this due to the staking method. If you do this using a bookmaker, you can start in stakes, don't need to be a pound, it could be 10p. Same if you use software for a Betfair exchange. It comes back to my point, there are different methods of doing the same thing and this is one way of making it work for you. I use this method and I have held off telling people about it, not because I will lose my edge, but because it's so dangerous if you have poor discipline or mentality, you're going to lose a lot of money. Let you be warned. As always, paper trade this and see for yourself. I like it and I make a profit from it. Again, waiting for the comment section to tell me I don't. I often find myself conflicted between reading the comments saying I make nothing and my profit and loss statement. I will say if you go out to prove something doesn't work, you'll find a way to prove that. If you try to find a way to prove something does work, you'll also prove that. It's why people in sciences get better results from going in with an open mind. When forensics scientists go looking for fingerprints to match, they don't get given a set of people they think it is and try to find the prints. They take what's in front of them and then match it to a database with no details other than the fingerprint. Yet when traders get new ideas, they try the hardest to find out how it won't work or make it work for everything, then wonder why they fail. The next strategy is win by track percentage. We'll use Newcastle from the 27th of September 2024 as this is when I wrote this part of the video. In 2024, Newcastle had had 2,199 races at this point. In this time, Trap 1 had won 389 out of 2,133 races, with a win percentage of 18.2%. Trap 2 had run 2,160 times with a win percentage of 16.1%, and Trap 3 had raced 2,172 times with a win percentage of 19.2%. Trap 4 had raced 2,175 times with a win percentage of 18.1% and Trap 5 had raced 2,104 times with a win percentage of 14.1%. And finally, Trap 6 has raced 2,112 times with a win percentage of 19.2%. If we look back over the previous years, these percentages only moved by a couple of percent. If we look over the past 14 days, Trap 1 moved by 2.4%, Trap 2 moved by 2.6%, Trap 3 moved by 0.1%, Trap 4 moved by 3.3%, Trap 5 moved by 2.1% and finally Trap 6 moved by 1.7%. Which is to be expected as there are fewer races. What we want to look for is bigger swings. Now let's look at the win percentage of just the 27th of September for Newcastle. Trap 1 won 12% of the races, Trap 2 won 36% of the races, Trap 3 won 24% of the races, Trap 4 won 48% of the races, Trap 5 won 24% of the races, and Trap 6 won 0% of the races. Looking at the bigger swing there, we see Dog 6 didn't win, and in order for the trap to get close to its average trap win percentage, we'll need to see some wins from Dog 6. We look at the next day's results, and Dog 6 won 6 races that day. We would readjust our percentages with our new data, go again for tomorrow. As a side note, the Dog 3 won the first race and the second race. Also, no Dog 2 or 5 won that day, giving them a 0% trap percentage. After checking back, Dog 2 and 5 won a total of 6 races across the following days. I will display the win percentage for each trap by course for 2024 to save you find it. Please pause this video to make notes or come back to it when needed. You can combine this method with repeating numbers method to see if you should go in on a race. If Dog 6 had won in race 1, in the first method, the second method would identify it would have a good chance to win both cases of repeating. That's it for the first two strategies. If you like the video and would like to see the second part where I cover live timings, please like and subscribe and turn on notifications. It lets me know that you want to see more videos like this. I've been Mark, this has been the Greyhound Trading Part 1, and until next time, happy trading.